Hello guys, the kids two here, and welcome to Pro Limited Logic Live. And uh, today we have a very, very great show, uh, hopefully very interesting show, where we have Venom Fang X uh, debating empty about brain on the topic of atheist society or Christian society, which will produce a better, productive, and moral society. Hmm. Uh, the uh, if you guys want to introduce yourselves or just say hello, Dan and Fang yeah. X. Hi there. And empty without brain. All right, guys. Good to see you all. Okay. So the the way this will work is that there will be four rounds of five minutes uh, each, and at the end there will be time for us to take your calls and your questions. Um, at the last five minutes, I should note that there will be some interactions between uh, the opponents, uh, time for questions and stuff like that. And um, uh, Empty Web Brain is uh, supposed to go first, am I right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That. So, okay. um, yep, it'll be five minutes each, and there'll be a grace period of 30 seconds just to finish up the point. Sweet. And um, I, that's that's all I have to say. That's all I. That's all I need to say. And uh, okay. I just want to wish you both, you guys, good luck. And I hope for a very interesting uh, debate. Okay. So, um, empty. Uh, I'll start with you. Uh, your okay. time starts now. In the debate tonight, I will be making three substantive points where I will be making my claim providing evidence to support it, and my warrant will explain the connection between the claim and evidence, making it an internal and very effective argument. However, I think it is best to define productive society, worldview, and atheism, referenced from the Oxford English Dictionary. Productive can be defined as the ability to create something abundantly and efficiently. Society can be defined as an, a structured community of people, bound together by a similar traditions, institutions, or nationality. Worldview can be defined as a comprehensive and usually personal conception or view of humanity, the world, or life. Atheists can be defined as someone who does not believe in a god or deities. From what I have seen from the atheists from British humanists and secular societies in university, they do projects to promote everyone's hu universal human rights. For example, equality for education, rights for diverse people to be treated as equals. The Declaration of Human Rights acts as the very foundation of the principles of respect for an individual. The fundamental assum assumption is that every person is a rational and or moral being who is entitled to be treated with dignity. They are called human rights because they are universal. Human rights are the rights to, to which everyone is entitled, no matter whom they are or where they live, simply because they are alive. One of the fundamental events which took place, which had an influence on the creation of human rights, was, du was during the resistance in France, where the Christian dominant groups ostracized and alienated everyone who did not share their interests and values, which led these minority groups to live in poverty, powerless and weak. They were used in the slave trade to promote pure capitalism, which was supported by the Christian leaders. However, they fought for their freedoms in 1789 in Bastille. As a result of the resistance, a document was written as a law, which acted as the very foundation of every human being's rights, promoting equality. Equality is a critical value for any civilized society in order to cre work together, progress, and prosper. By working together and acknowledging every individual's and group's interests, they can effectively contribute to the society's development through the collaboration of a consensus, where they can effectively provide services for their needs for health and well-being. By, by applying this universally, everyone wins. If we were to propose a dominant Christian worldview, only Christians would win. And I don't think we want to repeat the mistakes of our history by having one group dominant in our country. As I explained earlier, it would limit everyone else's human rights. For example, religion. For example, freedom of religion. My main message tonight is to show how we must not let, must not let ourselves be divided by race, creed, or religion. Because in a multicultural society, we all belong to a minority group. 
I'm from Wales. Sean is from Canada. These are minorities. Our right to belong to a minority group is a significant thing. We each have the right to be who we want to be and express what we think because we all have the personal freedoms. We all have liberty which is a very practical and vital ingredient to our lives. However, to maintain these freedoms, we must work for it, to guard everyone's freedoms, or we can risk losing our own. If we allow any minority group to lose their freedoms by prejudice or discrimination, we are threatening our own freedom. This isn't just an idea, this is fact. In every multicultural society, we shouldn't just tolerate minorities, we all belong to a minority, which means you and me. By creating a Christian Dominican society, we are, all, we are threatening the freedoms of other religious groups. I would consider it our very duty and responsibility to participate against the conflict and discrimination in order to correct this type of behavior. Otherwise, we can, we can see history repeating itself. So, in summary, my first point was, with an atheist worldview, we can promote everyone's human rights and create a more productive and moral and effective society. With a Christian dominant worldview, it would only promote their own individual freedoms, ostracizing and alienating everybody else's views. We must not, and my third and final point was we must not let ourselves become divided by race, creed, or religion. We are all equal. We all have the right to be who we are. And we must not let ourselves, must not let ourselves be not lest ourselves be vulnerable to it by dividing ourselves. We must unite together as one. Thank you. Okay, so is it my turn to speak now? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so uh, my name is Sean. Uh, just, just and a second. Sorry, I just want to uh, restart the timer. Sorry. Uh, That's okay. Sure. Uh, Grant, just... Okay. And, uh, yeah, you can start. All right, thank you. All right, I do have a few premises that I'd like to lay down, and my first premise is that the truth of Christianity is not contingent upon its ability to produce a productive society. Otherwise, if Christianity could produce a better society, then my opponent would necessarily have to believe Christian dogma and become a Christian, if that is his standard of truth. Does Christianity's truth depend on if it can produce a better society? And if not, then I would question what exactly does my opponent help uh, or hope to accomplish by, by this conversation? So I would say that, uh, does Christianity produce a better society? Uh, I would say this. Uh, I would argue that Christianity is quite true, regardless of its societal impact, and quite apart from making better societies, it makes better people, who in turn make better societies. And some example will be provided later of Christians historically who have contributed uh, to society. Uh, my second premise is that Christianity exclusively can justify why making a productive human society is objectively valuable, meaningful, and important because Christianity alone provides a teleological end to human existence. We were made for a purpose, and to the degree that society serves that purpose is to the degree that creating a productive society is something we ought to do. The atheist can make no ultimate, uh, excuse me, the atheist can make no ultimate distinction between the destruction or the building of a productive society since no objective value is attached to human existence since to an atheist humans are just a collection of meaningless chemicals that collected amazingly uh, and complexly by blind, undirected, and uninterested natural laws and will one day disperse again into dust. Christianity alone can account for what constitutes moral obligation and responsibility, as well as a measurement of behavior, whereas atheism has no justification for why building a productive society is objectively better than destroying a productive society, nor can they justify why humanity ought to build productive societies versus destroying them. And we'll argue further uh, as we get into this. And my, my last premise for now will be that uh, human rights and freedoms, which my atheist opponent has identified as universal, can only be accounted for by a universal, unchanging, unchanging sustainer and arbiter of human rights and freedoms, which cannot be granted by humanity themselves or defined by humanity themselves, since then humanity has the ability to take them away, redefine them, or ignore them altogether, and that means that they're not universal or unchanging. Responsibility, in this sense, is an exclusively theistic construct. 
Uh, I want to, I, I suppose I could start debating some of the points that my, my atheist opponent uh, mentioned, but I, I figure uh, I'll do that in the debate section. So I think I've, I've said my, my share. And I should say this, Christianity alone has the solution to the societal problems that we suffer today. The Bible says that one day all poverty, sickness, disease, moral evils, and death will be removed from the earth when Jesus returns. And Jesus himself said, my kingdom is not of this world. So Christians do not have any delusions about bringing about a utopia on earth. Rather, we're waiting for that when the Lord returns. It'll take a supernatural act. And lastly, and I'll finish with this, to say that uh, atheism can produce a better society morally is to presuppose the existence of a universal moral standard, which the atheist cannot uh, appeal to because they, they don't have one. And on top of that, on top of that, even if you imagine a utopian society where it has the best laws, so they, they say that murder is wrong and theft is wrong, just giving good laws does not itself produce uh, in human beings obedience to those laws. Even in our culture, we have laws that are meant to stop people from doing those things, but they do them anyways. So it's not about creating a good government, it's about creating good people. And only Christianity teaches that human beings have the ability to have a transformation of their hearts, which allows them to then uh, forsake these evils. Atheism provides no justification for saying that anything is morally right or wrong, and provides no motive for doing so, for uh, choosing good over evil, because ultimately there, there's no such thing as good or evil for an atheist. So that uh, is my opening statement. Thank you. Okay, Grant, so that's the first round over. Uh, before we start the next round, I have to reset the timer. Um, okay. So, uh, MT, I will invite you to make your response uh, starting now. Okay, right. I recently had a look at the uh, read of a book, and I've read uh, a book called The Uses of Arguments, where it describes how uh, the Ptolemy model uh, describes an argument where you have to begin with a claim, you have to ex uh, explain the data that you have to support the claim, and you have to explain the connection through, uh, between the data and the claim with a warrant. My, my opponent tonight, Sean, has done none of that. Truth of Christianity. He has not explained how Christianity can... He's, he's, he's uh, proposed that Christianity is the answer. However, he has, not, he has not explained to you what information he has to support his, his, uh, pre his premise. I have. I've explained how atheism can be supported through... Uh, uh, in fact, the human rights has been created through the f form of atheism because people rebelled against the, against the Christian leaders in France and, uh, you know, uh, uh, fought for their human rights and fought against the oppression. And human rights are the very foundation of, you know, our morality. It's a methodology, Sean. It's a study of ethics. So the study of ethics was first created by Aristotle, and he says how, explained how if we, excla if we were to say that there, there are absolute morals, then it lacks, you know, practical value. It, by saying that uh, morals are relative, we have, they have more practical value on a society. We can understand, we can use them in situations, understand, you know, to test them. We can see their application, how useful they are. For example, as you mentioned, theft. That is a by making that a law against to prevent it from happening is a is a good thing. We acknowledge that. I, as an atheist, acknowledge that as a fact that they th that theft, murder, and all and all of these awful things are terrible. I acknowledge that, and I'm, I am an atheist. I acknowledge that because I've learned from from my parent, my parents, my family, my from society through a moral a moral consensus, and this is how it's been created. We are standing on the, sh on the shoulders of giants. This has been here because of the people who fought in the resistance to fight for every minority's human rights. You have completely disregarded that point. The fact that every minority deserved the right. I acknowledge the fact that Christianity deserves a right. However, of course, to suggest that it, it, it would be to propose it as an absolute worldview would be entirely redundant. There's no use of that. There's no application to it. And as I gave in the example, how uh, the, the effects it had on France, it, it led, in fact, 70, 80 percent of the people to poverty, whereas only 20 percent of the people who were in power had the power, had the, had the ability to produce. 
Whereas with an atheist worldview, you have everyone involved in it. You've got 100% out of it, which means a more productive society, you're more likely to progress and prosper. And you say that we can only have morals if we have a moral giver. Well, to begin with, you need to actually explain how your God does it. Where, where is he? We haven't seen him down yet. We haven't seen him stop a murderer or rapist. And if, we are, if, we, and if he thinks that's wrong, then why hasn't he done anything about it, Sean? Why, wh- where is he? What's he doing? Is he having a cup of tea and watching television? I don't know what the fuck he's doing. Anyway, in general, I just think uh, a Christian dominant worldview would be entirely useless because having an atheistic worldview uh, makes you more open to acti- ideas and more practical. Whereas with a Christian one, you're just going to limit yourselves to only certain things, and that's it. And you're going to think, try to impose your morality and your way of life onto everyone else where it's, not, it's just not practical. There's no use in it. And as I think my main point, uh, my main response to Sean tonight is the fact that we can test uh, morality and productivity and everything with a methodology through a study. And we can effectively reflect on the results of the study that we perform. And we can understand the mistakes of a certain uh, moral, moral law, which is what we have today. This is how we progress and prosper into life. We don't need a moral law giver like God. We have each other. We have life. And to say that we, that an atheist only thinks that we're just chemicals is entirely redundant. I see the beauty of life. I've had cancer. Shit's happened to me. I, lo- I love life because I can appreciate the fact that I have friends, family, and I can meet so many new people. I see how the chemicals of everyone has built a great society and is awesome. And to suggest that, oh, to suggest that I have no laws or uh, that I'm, uh, sorry, that I'm immoral because I'm an atheist is just dull in my opinion because that's that's another premise you have not yet yet proven with any relevant evidence and you have yet to explain the connection between, between anything. You've just started with premises and ended with nothing really. Okay, that's me done. You've just completely ignored my points. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, okay, Grant. Uh, just before Venom, uh, if I could just reset my timer. There we go. So you can uh, make your rebuttal uh, starting your time starting uh, now. Great. Um, I don't appreciate having words put in my mouth. I never said that you're immoral because you're an atheist. What I said is the atheist has no justification for saying that anything is ultimately or absolutely right or wrong. Why? This is my question to you. Why is the progression of human society better than its destruction? I think you're guilty of what's called speciesism. Look it up on Wikipedia. You are assigning a higher value to humanity than, say, other creatures, and then you're also assigning a value to life which it doesn't intrinsically have. You said that we give human rights and that we deserve rights, and my question is why? If humans are the arbiters of human rights, if we're the ones who make them up, decide them, and give them, they have the same force, they have the same force as this. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. It's an imaginary idea. It's something someone thought up, and it has the exact same application in reality as saying humans have rights. If atheists give human rights, then they can also take them away. That follows logically. Now, one of your opening statements was you you cited uh, the French Revolution, I believe, and you you, you talked about Christians in the past, so-called Christians, who enforced their religious dogma on people by threat of violence and oppression and all that. And I could make the argument that they weren't Christians to begin with, or I could do the alternative. I could do the same thing to you. I could cite atheists who have had a great degree of power, like Stalin and Pol Pot and Hitler, who enforced their ideology and killed many people and did all kinds of atrocities. But does that follow logically that atheism is wrong? I'd say no. That's just an ad hominem attack. The truth of Christianity has nothing to do with what Christians do. The truth of Christianity has to do with, is the claims of Christianity true? Is Jesus Christ God in human flesh? That's the issue. That's the issue. So, as I said in my first premise, even if Christianity cannot demonstrably create a more productive society, it doesn't follow that Christianity is false. Therefore, again, I ask you, what is the point uh, of your initial debate topic, which is, 
which makes a better society, Christianity or atheism? I would say that's ultimately irrelevant. And what you need to tell me is why in atheism you're even concerned about creating a more productive society as opposed to destroying it. Your answer is ultimately arbitrary. Let me move on. So what my opponent needs to demonstrate is not that his political or social insight allows him to regulate or create the most successful government or culture possible, as it is of no consequence to the Christian worldview if a non-Christian is able to make good laws or run a successful government. After all, it is easy to imagine that both a Christian and a non-Christian can enforce a law that says do not murder, and neither would necessarily be more successful at enforcing this law than the other. The issue is therefore not the specifics of what makes a good government, but rather which worldview, Christianity or atheism, can establish an objective value to human life and culture that makes our concern for a good government morally intelligible. It is my contention that since an atheist has no ultimate or universal standard of right or wrong to appeal to, they neither have a basis for saying that one government is better or worse morally than another, and further, their concern to build a better society is as arbitrary as one whose concern is to destroy such a society. The destruction or the building of a society are both equally morally vacant activities in an atheist worldview, since no objective or absolute standard exists with which to appeal to that gives human life any kind of meaningful value or a mandate to survive and flourish. The Christian worldview, however, says man is made in the image of God and has dominion on this planet for a reason, and a God-given right and command to love one another and form meaningful relationships and cultures that allow for human flourishing and well-being. Without God, humanity is nothing but animated stardust that accidentally collected, collected into a complex biological mechanism by undirected and uninterested forces, and thus our extinction or survival are both equally meaningless in an atheist worldview. In short, the atheist has no justification for why he should be concerned with human government or human well-being since one cannot get an ought from an is. An atheist is concerned with human government, but the atheist cannot explain why he ought to be, since humanity has no ultimate value or purpose to an atheist worldview, and thus no absolute or ultimate right to flourish or imperative to survive. My last point uh, in this five-minute section. Uh, so what then is the Christian's role in today's world? It was a Christian named St. Augustine who defined the idea of the secular being the sphere of existence within a culture where both Christians and non-Christians can act and interact freely in a manner that is acceptable to both. Going shopping for food, running a business, walking on the sidewalk, strolling through the park, these are all activities which both Christians and non-Christians are both equally entitled to and can enjoy without offending each other or God. Christians are happy to exist in a non-Christian government and allow for secularism to exist. In fact, we thought of it first. And as Christians, we enjoy secular what? freedoms because it is the freedom that allows Christians to fulfill the mission for which they're on this earth to do, namely to live among non-Christians and invite them to be saved through faith in Jesus Christ. If Christians were to isolate themselves from the world and create a Christian-only nation, they would be violating the very commandment of God to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and disobeying Christ when he told us to be of the world, or excuse me, to be in the world, but not of the world. So I see it as a Christian imperative to exist alongside non-Christians and to be a, not a dominating influence, but certainly to be an influence for the better, because we actually have a standard of better with which to appeal to, namely the moral objectivity of our creation. We were made for a purpose, and that purpose uh, is what informs I, us. Is my time up? Just, yes, yes, your time is up. Sorry. Uh, yep, that's the great time period over. Um, okay. So I'll just reset and... Uh, one step. You can ever halfway through. Uh, just to let you guys know, we're halfway through. That is the end of the second round. We have two rounds left. Um, this will be the last round where you'll be able to discuss without being interrupted for questions. So uh, make this uh, count. And okay. uh, empty. Let me know when you're ready, so I can start the timer. Yeah, ready when you are. Okay, so your time starts. Okay, Sean. You mentioned that you said that uh, we have no justification for morality because we don't have a moral law giver like God. Well, we can actually test, you know, morality through the study of ethics, through ethicists, and a number of of other people who can actually, you know, m actually test laws and test its inf its impact on the society. 
we can detest and reflect on the mistakes where the moral absolutes that you propose, for example, don't be gay, don't be whatever, is limiting individuals a minority's freedom, which is absolutely harmless to everyone. Which again, I go back to the human rights. As a human, we deserve human rights because we are all equal. We are all the same. We all possess the ability to be productive individuals in a society, to be moral, to help each other, to provide services for everyone's needs. By helping everyone invo become involved in the society, you're going to get a more productive society, more moral society, more sincere, and everyone involved, you know, more engaging, more responsibility, more of a duty. And by saying that without a God we are nothing is redundant. You can't prove that. We, we're already here. We, are, we don't need a God. We have to rely on ourselves to build a society. We have to rely on ourselves to, to become more active in it. We don't have to rely on a God to give us moral absolutes because we create our own meanings. We, like I mentioned earlier, a, a worldview is a very personal conception. We create it ourselves. And we can, we, through a consensus, we can become... We, and, consensus of creating a society and a multi through a multiculturalism, you'll get more perspectives and more backgrounds and more views and more knowledge in the information. And in the perspective, we'll have a more, uh, more greater impact on a person's influence on society. Because they'll understand everyone, every, uh, the different backgrounds, different types of information that we can see. For example, different sciences. Uh, how, how many forms of science we can understand, I don't know. It's unbelievable it's fantastic but i wish i could know it all but i can't but because it's just enormous and it's fantastic that's what i love about humanity it's so different it's so brilliant and so irritating because i want to i want to know it all but i can't but I, but that's what makes it so brilliant is that, and the fact that we, there are so many things in our lives that are mysterious for example the absolute beginning what became the uh, came before the big bang we don't know i love that it's a mystery i don't know what's there and to substitute that for a god doesn't answer anything you're adding another unknown the, into the equation which doesn't answer anything and and to suggest that we have to have a moral law giver i'm going back to a uh, previous point i do apologize to a moral law giver to suggest that it's objective you you need to prove it sean you need to prove it's objective and to refer back to the bible or anything like that is redundant and is useless you need to test it as i mentioned you need to go through the study of ethics and morality in order to prove it that is why you need data sean need information and you need to explain the connection through the warrant you've made the premise you've got to explain the information that's available the evidence for your claim and you need to explain the connection as i mentioned with the ptolemy model argument and and everything it's fantastic it's absolutely incredible what we've done through a through the secularization of a society that's been fantastic and if, before this before the 1950s religion and every other and other dominant groups imposed their morality imposed their rights on everyone else where disregarding entirely everybody else and i guess my main argument or my main question is going to be why wh what exactly are you talking about when you say you created a secular society? You created like a secular minority. What What do you mean by that? I don't I don't understand. Like, why would a Christian want to create a sec someone who doesn't believe in God? That doesn't make any sense. Because in a sense, you want to create a more Christian worldview. You want to have one or more Christians. I I am an atheist, but I don't want everyone to be an atheist simply because well. You know, we're all different. We're all minorities. As a Christian, you want everyone to go to heaven and all that. As far as I'm concerned, I'm concerned on the life now and creating more productive for people now. You're, you're thinking about the afterlife and what's happening then. I'm thinking about today and now and helping people with services and everything. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Grand Empty. Uh, let's have to reset the timer. And... Uh, you can, Venom, you can start your rebuttal uh, now. Excellent. One thing you said is God is an unknown, and if he was such an unknown, then we wouldn't be talking about him. In fact, he endeavored to reveal himself, which is why we have the Bible. Now, you keep saying that this imposition of religious identity is wrong. Uh, again, I'm asking you, tell me why, what makes something wrong. You keep saying, well, we can test morality, we can study ethics. Well, that presupposes the existence of morality prior to our study of it. After all, you can't study something that doesn't exist. So I'm, qu I'm wondering, where does morality come from? What makes murder, for example, wrong? You've yet to tell me why. 
you you've gone in a circle. You you've restated your premises that uh, that we ought to be moral to one another because that makes human society progress. But I'm asking you again, why is the progression of human society better than its destruction? What are you appealing to? You need humanity needs to have a teleological end, a purpose for their existence, in order to say that their survival and flourishing is objectively better than their destruction. After all, we can think of certain life forms which we destroy for certain purposes. For example, we kill cancer. In fact, you said that you had cancer. Cancer is, in one sense or another, living cells. And so why is eliminating cancer morally better than allowing it to thrive? Why do human beings have more rights than cancer in an atheist worldview? You've yet to tell me why. I think you're guilty of speciesism. You've been assigning values without justifying where those values come from. And by saying that humans give each other values, that means humans also have the right to take them away if they're the arbiters of value. Now, I never said that uh, Christians created a secular minority. Uh, so you put those words in my mouth again. Uh, Christians have no such ambition as to create a Christian society, nation, or government, since becoming a Christian requires an act of God in regenerating a human being and transforming their heart, which no one can force on another. Even if the government was entirely run by Christians, that would not ensure that any of its populace would be Christians. Even if all the schools taught Christianity and was mandatory for everyone to go to ch church, that does not ensure a single one of the populace would be a genuine, regenerate, spirit-filled, transformed, born-again Christian. Jesus himself said, as I quoted before, my kingdom is not of this world. And it was the error of the Catholic Church, historically, to seek political power and enforce so-called Christian ideals. Jesus never forced anyone to convert, nor did he attempt to overthrow the Roman government which occupied Israel during his lifetime. Now, the Jews at the time rejected Jesus as their Messiah due to his submission and willingness to cooperate with Rome and not challenge them. Since the Jews expected the Messiah to bring God's kingdom to earth and overthrow all human governments. So, Jesus, as our example, it is the Christian expectation, hope, and confidence that at the second coming of Christ, this is exactly what will happen as foretold. But in the meanwhile, Christians have no such ambition that they will accomplish what only God himself in Christ can do and predicted to do. Namely, to bring regenerate, spirit-filled, transformed, born-again Christian. Jesus himself said, as I quoted before, my kingdom is not of this world. And it was the error of the Catholic Church, historically, to seek political power and enforce so-called Christian ideals. Jesus never forced anyone to convert, nor did he attempt to overthrow the Roman government which occupied Israel during his lifetime. Now the Jews, at the time, rejected Jesus as their Messiah due to his submission and willingness to cooperate with Rome and not challenge them. Since the Jews expected the Messiah to bring God's kingdom to earth and overthrow all human governments. So, Jesus, as our example, it is the Christian expectation, hope, and confidence that at the second coming of Christ, this is exactly what will happen as foretold. But in the meanwhile, Christians have no such ambition that they will accomplish what only God himself in Christ can do and predicted to do. Namely, to bring into conformity the governments of the world into perfect, in perfect harmony with God's expectation for human life and eliminate all the things that destroy us. Namely, the things like poverty, selfishness, immorality, and even death itself. Those things will be eliminate, eliminated when Christ returns, and atheism provides no mechanisms and no hope for overthrowing any of those things. In fact, the ultimate end of the atheist worldview is that the universe is going to collapse in on, on itself and utterly destroy us, and that'll be the end of it. The Christian hope, however, is remarkably distinct. Human beings actually have, as I said before, a teleological end, a value, a purpose, for which we are to serve, and to the degree that we serve that purpose, that is what is morally obligatory. Excuse me, morally obligatory and morally best. Uh, and I know I've said a mouthful, so let me just say my main my main thrust, which I'm going to want to cross-examine you when I have the chance. You need to justify. You need to tell me where morality comes from, and if it comes from humanity, does that not entail us to alter it, change it, or ignore it? altogether. You say humans deserve rights. Where do we, why do we deserve them? I explained Where, that. Uh, no, you didn't. You'll have to justify that again. Anyways, that, that's my time, so that's it. Thank you. All right. Okay, so that's the end of the uninterrupted debate. Uh, I okay. just have to reset this timer, if it will allow me. And uh, there we go. So, um, yep, so MT, you may begin uh, now. Okay, 
Right. Regarding God as an unknown solution, it's because you can't explain it. You've you've started with the premise of God, but you can't explain it. You haven't. You you said he created everything, so everything would be classed as the information. However, you haven't ex- explained how he did it, and just to say he spoke it into existence is redundant because you can't prove it, you can't test it, you can't repeat it, you can't observe it, you can't use science to test it. So it's a redundant answer. And you say, where does morality come from? It must have existed beforehand. Well, to begin with, it's a study of behavior to test its application and to test its use. For example, we can test how by giving certain laws on certain types of behavior to prevent uh, an individual from, you know, being oppressed, oppressed an individual's equality uh, is practical. And we can test the, you know, whether what's right and wrong through those moral means. And... Why is a society better than destroying it? Well, of course, create, creating a society is better than destroying it because, well, we, don't, we want to live. We all want to be here. We all want to create, uh, you know, provide services for each other to prevent each other from going through painful harmony or anything like that. And we need to, to, to work together. By creating an atheist worldview, you're creating a more pluralist approach onto the society and helping everyone, no matter whom they are. And you say, why is eliminating, eliminating cancer a bad thing? Well, because it, because it can harm an individual's life. It can kill them, for Christ's sake. It can, for, for example, with myself, if, if I didn't have people studying in science, testing to, dis, to see which, uh, how to destroy cancer cells, I would not be here today. If I had people like Eric Hovind in charge of science, I would be screwed. I would not be here today. I would not be alive. We'd have people saying, oh, don't worry, God will answer that. We'll kill you. We don't know how, but we'll have him do it anyway. So, that, exactly, which makes God, the God, idea of God redundant. We need to test, observe, repeat, analyze, and record the results in order to reflect on them, to reflect on the mistakes, and understand why we need to do better, or how we can make it better. We deserve human rights because we can create a more equal society and create more equality for everyone that way we can be- create a more productive society uh, it's a it's a lot like the the game called the prisoner's dilemma by by helping each other we're going to both win by both win in the game however we if we if one defects and one lose one cooperates you're going to have someone acting as the oppressor and one as the oppressed that that is why we need to cooperate with each other so by Having given each other human rights, we create an effective approach for for every human being to cooperate with each other to create a to create a better society and a better way of living. And to suggest that human rights, well, the human rights, uh, the humans can take them away. No, the, uh, human rights were formed through a consensus of of uh, strong leaders who and individuals who were able to create, test, repeat, and observe the results of study of behavior, for example, through morality and, other, and social sciences and, every, and everything that has helped create a better society today through the form of politics that has been, el- that have been governed. Granted, we need to see a few changes in a few parts to help more people out. However, of course, we're building on that. That's how we're building, Sean. If we were just to keep a Christian society in government today, we wouldn't see anything change. we just see the oppressors in power as it is today. Uh, as we, as it were in France, sorry, and that that is why we have a secular, more of a secular society in the United Kingdom. We are prospering, we are progressing, we are getting better, and we will continue to be- get better. And that's the influence we want on the on the rest of the world, and that is how we are helping everyone, like through their human rights. As I mentioned just now, why we need human rights is so we can help everyone cooperate together to create through the collaboration of a consensus. And you say that the Christian hope, Christ, the, the Christian faith, gives the ultimate purpose. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. That might be good for you, but not everyone's going to agree with it, and you're going to have to put up with that. Everyone's going to have a, their own different worldview, Sean. As I mentioned, a worldview is a personal perception, and that's it. You'll have to accept. You'll have to accept that the people come from different backgrounds, different different faiths, and have different points of view. You'll have to accept that. And with a secular society, you'll open. Uh, the public sphere of everyone to have their own input on an idea in order to create to create a more a more productive and better society and more pro- provide services for all the needs that we need so just to just to say ah oh, just 
Oh, sorry, I was just uh, running out of words to say for the moment. But what my main message tonight is to say that we're all, the human rights are the foundation of creating a better society, and they were formed through the atheistic worldview, and we kicked ass. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just have to restart the timer, lucky for the last time. And Venom, you may begin now. Is this the time for cross-examination, or is that next? Uh, I, think, I, th- I thought I said that, that this was the time for cross-examination. Yeah. All right, well, you didn't really ask me any questions, so I guess I'll just respond to, to what I you did. said. I did. I asked you what you mean meant by the purpose of Christian. All right, well, you had yeah. your time to a- I mean, you talked through the whole thing, so now, now it's my time. Um, right. You said you said that you when you now asked when I asked the question. Now, by the way. Okay, thank you. So mm-hmm. when I asked you why is it better to create or destroy a society, which is morally better, you said it's better to create a society, a, a prosperous society, because we want to live, we want to create, we need to work together. That doesn't answer the question because yes, arbitrary does. arbitrary statements it can be answered an arbitrarily. Society and it creates that a more okay. productive society, and we we can each. This all is my turn to talk. I'm allowed to interrupt you. Thank yes, you. Uh, yeah. So I would respond like this. I would say it's better to destroy society because I want to destroy society. I want to destroy things and I need to destroy things. You your answer was what we want determines what's better. So if I want the alternative by that logic, it is equally viable. Human desire, human want cannot be the basis of anything because human wants change from person to person. So a universal standard with which to appeal to that would say that making human society, prospering human society is objectively better, you cannot appeal to humanity to do so because humanity does not universally agree. I would also, when I asked you, why do we deserve human rights? Your answer was because we can create moral, a morally equal, uh, equal society. That also doesn't answer the question. It has the same problem. Saying that because we can do something does not say that we deserve something. I mean, it's, it, it's completely illogical. One, does, one statement does not follow the other, so you may have to tell me, again, why do we deserve human rights? Right. We deserve human rights so we can, you know, they were formed through the resistance. Remember what I mentioned with the France okay, so resistance? Let right. me ask you this. Before the resistance, did we have human rights? No, we didn't have human rights because we because there weren't people acting on it. That was the problem. We didn't have you know okay, a, so a hum- document you would, to look, we didn't have a document to record it. There, there were, okay, so a there document. Were, there were, document makes there were human rights. I'm allowed that to interrupt you. This is my Sean. Sean, let yeah, me I'm allowed to interrupt you. Thank you. So a document gives us rights. So if I write a document that says human have no rights, and Hitler did that in Nazi Germany, he, uh, Jews were not persons. That's what yeah, the government sure. agreed, the, the human and rights. therefore, according the human to your logic, cre- I'm allowed to speak now, thank you. According right, to your logic, right. Jews Jews did not have rights, according to your logic. Now, oh. tell me, why do humans have rights prior to the writing on paper, do they? You said no. You said no. So the natural disposition of humanity, prior to any universal consensus of any government, the natural disposition of humanity, according to you, when I asked you that question, is that no, we don't have rights. You have just proven that the atheist worldview does not assign unalienable okay. human rights to human beings prior to human beings assigning them. In a society, we were able to create a more... For that doesn't everyone. mean we deserve them or that we have them. Yes. It just means it's written on a piece of paper and has the same By force intellectually as... I, I'm, I'm, this is my turn to speak. Thank you. Your answer has the same force as what I said before. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. It doesn't matter what we think. It's not true. Human beings don't have rights according to you, until we make them. Peter Parker isn't Spider-Man until we make him Spider-Man, but he doesn't exist, and rights don't exist just because we write it down on a piece of paper. Now, Because they have practical value, Sean. That is how... Okay, but why... Then let me ask you this. Why is practical value equivalent to morally better? Because we can test, we can test it, and we can see the results of it. We can see how the practical value of it, because that is how we have. Okay, so something is morally value. better practically because it's practical. Thank you. That's that's a vicious circle. No, the principles we have. That's circular position, reasoning, my friend. The position, the principles we have that are laws promote the practical values, and we can. Okay, and I'm asking you, why is that morally better? Why should we promote practicality versus destruction? Why should? Sorry. Why should we promote practicality as opposed to destruction? I'm accusing you of being absolutely arbitrary. Sorry, repeat that one more time. 
why should we promote prosperity and building a progressive society versus its destruction? Why do we have a moral obligation to do so? We have a responsibility and a duty to do so. I, that's my own Where does personal that belief. Where does my, that duty what, and responsibility come have, from? From what I have learned throughout my education that has been promoted through the, the society, through a consensus. A okay, so if the consensus disagreed, okay, yes. so if the consensus disagreed, then you'd have a different answer. Yeah, we would have a, di a different answer if he, if he, if we didn't so have if, uh, what we have today. We are standing on the shoulders of giants, uh -huh. of people who did this work for us. Okay, so if if Hitler was successful and took over the world, and the entire world agreed that Jews were subhumans and deserving of extinction, we killed them all. Mm. Would that make it morally right? Not to an extent. No, it wouldn't. Why not? But that, just judging by what I have learned and how we can, you know, see the fact that you said the oppressed, oppressed. You had learned the differently. Oppressed. Sorry. The pre if you had learned differently, if you had grown up in a Nazi Germany, and that is what you had learned, would that make it right? If I had learned that, if that was the only thing, learned I had learned, that killing that, Jews was right. Would that make it right? If that was the only thing I had learned, then unfortunately I think I may be under the influence that may be right and the That's same go to you I didn't know what your influence would be I'd say does learning something does learning that killing Jews is right does that make it right you said that what determines your view of morality is what you learned so does what you learn determine what makes right or wrong can we well Sean how do you know we, what you learn about God is right because you you have learned it apparently because well, we all have the to difference between you what justifies well, I'm asking you what's the justification that what you have learned is morally right how do you know that your view of morality is uh, better guys, than because guys, they have more practical uh, value the, uh, sure, by comparison why is you're practical all, you're moral because why not guys, that's just, the end of the uh, uh, round right all right thank you very much thank you okay grand uh, so that's that's it, that's it isn't it I've just been that's that's the end of the formal uh, debate. Um, first, I'm not sure if we have any caller. Yeah, we have a caller who wants to call in. Um, seeing here in the chat from Zulu. Um, Saul in Israel. Okay. I'm not sure what's... what's that we're just mean? waiting for him to... We're, we're just taking a call from a somebody who wants to call in. Alright, cool. Uh, Sol. And yeah, there he is as you send a call, we're just waiting for him to pick up. Hey, hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, yes, we can hear you fine. Okay. Welcome to the, uh, the call, welcome to the show. Uh, what, what's your question? And... Okay, uh, this is my question for Sean, okay? Hi there. Uh, Sean, you, you asked, how according to atheism can murder be wrong? So sure. I, I want to ask you, how according to Christianity is murder wrong? If you're not at all judged by your works in any way, but only by your faith. This, um, faith. Okay, that's fine. Wait, wait. Um, that can... your question? No, not, not, I'm not done yet. I apologize. Okay. How can it claim that the moral system provided by Christianity can create better people or superior to a man-made moral system if, according to this worldview, if Hitler asks for forgiveness and accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior five minutes before he dies, he goes straight to heaven, no judgment whatsoever, the same heaven that Jesus lives in, by the way, no judgment whatsoever, while the Jews who believe in the same God but worshipped him by a different covenant all go straight to hell, even though they were nothing but kind to their fellow human beings. Are those your two questions? Yep. Okay, so let's answer the first one. Uh, if the Bible teaches that we are saved regardless of our works, then why is murder wrong? The Bible says faith without works is dead, and faith is not mere just blind belief. What faith is is an intimate relationship with God and a conformity to the person of Christ. And Christ, who is God himself... When we're conformed into his image, we are told to love one another and even to love our enemies. And so what this faith does is it obeys the teachings of Christ and actually adopts his very person, his very character, into our nature. So I don't murder because I love my fellow human being. 
It has nothing to do with, do I obey simply to please God? I obey because I love God, and His law is good. I recognize it as good, and it flows from the very person that God has made me into. So that, that's my answer to your first question. My second question is, how is it, your, your, your question was, how is it moral that Hitler could repent on his deathbed, confess Jesus as Lord and be saved, but Jews in the Holocaust who did not believe in Christ could go to hell when they die? The answer is this, all human beings, from Hitler down to Mother Teresa or whoever you find noble, the Bible teaches all have sinned and fallen short of the gl glory of God. So you may say that Hitler was worse on the outside than probably most people in the history of the world because of the amount of deaths that he caused. But the thing is, the same heart that was in Adolf Hitler was in Mother Teresa. We are all sinners and none deserve heaven. So if God graciously decides to transform a person, change their very nature, give them a new heart, and that person dies with Christ and is risen a new regenerate person, Adolf Hitler would die and be risen into a new person. And that's why it's morally superior, because, first of all, God has the right to forgive anyone he wants. No one deserves to be saved. Everyone deserves to go to hell. And the person that Hitler would be after he comes to saving faith in Christ would not be the same person that he was prior. So that how would you would show have to die. Can I What's ask up? you a question? Uh, sure. How would you know if you deserve to go to heaven, then? No one deserves to go to heaven. Okay, how would you know you deserve to go to hell, then? The Bible teaches that anyone who sins is worthy of judgment, and all have sinned. So what if the t Bible taught you something else, then? Well, the truths of the Bible are based on God's necessary and eternal nature. So and what if it taught you something else? What if it taught you something else? It couldn't. It couldn't possibly do so. Yeah, but what if it did? That's like asking, what if 1 plus 1 equals 3? It's logically impossible. Well, can you explain that? Absolutely. God is an eternal being, and his n nature is necessary, and the Bible is his word, and is intricately linked to his eternal character and nature, which is immutable, unchanging, and could not be otherwise, because God is necessary. So everything in the Bible, because it flows from God's character and nature, is equally necessary as he is. Right, so the Bible is acting as your evidence, and your claim is that God exists. Now can you explain how he, you know, how the connection between Bible and God, how... How can you? Uh, how does the Bible act as evidence for God? What can uh, what can we see from reality that relates to your God and the Bible? What what can we see today? Well, I never argued, at least in this conversation, that the Bible is evidence for God. I merely said that the Bible is His Word, and so long as that's true, then it's true. Yeah, but how so do you know? How do you know it's true? Okay, so but now we're changing the topic from our original topic. Now you're right, asking so a question I, of epistemology. A... You're asking me how do I know? that my faith yeah. is right. And I'd be happy to answer that. In fact, that's what I do on my YouTube channel. And I don't want to take much time, so why don't you make I'd your like question actually very ask specific. A question. I'd oh, like to make a question about this topic, actually. Um, I think, I think um, but what you, you, you didn't really answer my question. I asked, how does, how, how does that, how, how do you call that a, a morally superior system when it doesn't matter if you ate shellfish or you murdered and raped people you both get the exact same punishment, and if you work on the Sabbath, or if you uh, um, commit, um, if you commit genocide, yeah. you are you deserve the exact same punishment. The Bible does. First of all, the Bible does not teach that everyone will be punished the same. Jesus would often say the punishment will be worse for this group of people than that group of people. So, first of all, that's not exactly true. Uh, the second thing I'd point out is your question about Sabbath and shellfish. I, re I have an old, uh, a video on my YouTube channel called Old Testament Slavery, Stoning, and Seafood, where I make it clear that those were Old Testament laws given to the Jewish people during the duration of the Old Covenant and are not for New Covenant Christian believers of the Church of Jesus Christ. So okay, that's, so, so that's let another me way of that, answering. Let me change that into atheism then. What if a, a, sure. a person's sin is being an atheist? All he does is honestly look at the world and see no evidence for God, and therefore yeah. he does not believe in him. Now, the, okay. I know the Bible, say, the Bible says that, that the creation and the Bible are enough evidence for a person, but apparently right. it isn't, because the fact, the fact is that most atheists do not find the Bible, nor nature, um, 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 viewing nature through the eyes of the Bible, they don't find that a, a compelling argument, so to speak. Sure. So they, that, yeah. those people deserve the exact same punishment as Hitler. Here, here's my and, answer for you. 
Okay. Here's my answer for you. The Bible teaches that the rejection of the creation specifically as evidence for God is a moral issue. The atheist is looking to deny God. If you were looking for him, you'd look at things differently, but you're actively trying to run away from him. You suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So your, your uh, motive, although you may not be aware of it or you deny it, your, your motive is actually to reject God. You want nothing to do with him, and so you don't look at creation as you ought, and that's why you're responsible. Sean, can I answer that, please? Our motive yes. is to test and repeat it and to observe it to see, you know, whether your particular god is above all the other religions' gods, because they all propose the same premise. They all say their god is absolute. Their god is right. this. Their god is that. You're saying okay, nothing so more are you than Islam. Pursuing, Jewish, are you actively uh, pursuing the true god? Would you say that? Well, we're testing the hypothesis, Sean. Are you? Through a methodology, yes, and we're trying but, to see okay, whether you're right a, above everyone I, else. How do you intend to do that, since God's not an empirical object? Sorry? God is not an empirical object. He exists outside of the natural world. So how do you intend to how do you know that? observe God? How do you know Conveniently. that? Conveniently. Yeah. How do you know that? How do you know he exists outside the universe? Have you been outside the universe? Well, I don't have to. It, first of all, it's logically necessary. It's revealed in the pages of Scripture, and the God of eternity has revealed himself to me personally. Okay, can you explain uh, how he revealed himself to you then, Sean? Well, first of all, he revealed himself, as, as I said, through the creation. If you look at a computer, you know there was a computer builder who exists outside of the computer. And I look at the creation and say, yep, there's a creator, and he exists outside the creator. It's a logical deduction. So a building has uh, to have I, a builder. Just, well, the, the, di the difference is, is that you... Can I just, that, uh, yeah. just, just make a point, sorry. Um, why are you presupposing a universe creator? Uh, Why am I supposing it? Yes, why are you presupposing a universe creator? Uh, for for buildings and we can we can see the we can meet the uh the builders, we can meet the technicians who made this laptop, we can yep. test we can see these people, yeah. we know they exist, we know how they built these things. Okay and for the universe there's no such Yeah, uh, that's okay. And the God of the true and living God has revealed himself throughout human history. We have the writings of the Jewish prophets and finally his incarnation in the person of Christ who is testified to by eyewitnesses and fulfilled the prophecies that that same God revealed to the Jewish prophet thousands of years prior. That's how we know. And how do you know you can trust that, though, Sean? How do I know I can trust their testimony? Yeah. Well, how do you know, how do you know the devil is, uh, isn't having an influence on their, you know, on their... On the position. Yeah, sure. Uh, for example, in the book of Isaiah, God says, I declare the end from the beginning. None other can do this. So his ability to foretell the future, proving his sovereignty, is one of the ways that we can know that he is the real deal. And so I can quote, uh, I can give you a few examples. I'll give you a really quick one. In the book of Nehemiah, uh, a man received the commission to go back and restore and rebuild Jerusalem. And in the book of Daniel, it said that 440 years, 440 years from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the advent of the Messiah, and it gives the exact date, and then Jesus appeared on the scene on the exact day, predicted hundreds of years in advance. Hundreds of years in advance, and he changed the world, just as foretold. That's inescapable. And then Israel, of course, came back and became a nation, just as foretold, unlike any nation in history that had been expelled from their land, maintained their national identity, and returned after a 2,000 years of exile. This is unprecedented in the history of mankind, and God's word foretold it. How do you know it's God's word, though, Sean? I just told you. Because it says so, and that's it. Because it predicted the future with such accuracy, unlike anything... Yeah, did it, did it give a specific date, Sean, to the events? Yes. Yeah. Specific date, yes. Sean, oh, Sean, I, uh, Sean uh, I, I happen to live in Israel right now, and really? the thing is that Israel became a country because the, it, the Jews read it in the Bible. They believed it to, it, that, it must, that it must exist. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's not as if uh, 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 Jesus foretold it, but the Old Testament foretold it, and uh, uh, the Old Testament foretold it, and the Jews acted upon what they read in the Bible. Uh, even if that was, okay, but like I said, in the book of Daniel, uh, Daniel I would be more interested in because it gives the exact date. You don't find an exact date for the rebirth of Israel. 
However, I would note that Israel specifically was exiled, as, uh, as I said and as foretold, and they had constantly been near the brink of extinction. By all rights, they should have been utterly annihilated many times over. The fact that they survived to create a nation, even though that is what the Bible said, that they would be near extinction constantly, that is, I mean, it, it's not as narrow as, as you're making it out to be. There's other factors that make it amazing. But if you don't even want to talk about the rebirth of Israel, concentrate on what I said about Daniel, that it predicted the exact year to the exact day, actually, when the Messiah would appear and change the world. Uh, what, what's the date, then, Sean? Can you give us a date? Uh, read Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, 24 through 26. It lays out 444 years from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince. Now, the issuing of the decree, as I said, was in the book of Nehemiah. That was 444. BC predicted the exact year with the exact time to the advent of the Messiah. That's why Jesus, when he appeared on the scene, accused the Jews of not being ready for his coming, though they ought to have been if they had read the scriptures. They should have known. But, but, also, but wasn't, wasn't God's covenant with the Jews? Sorry, go, uh, the rejection of Jesus was also foretold, for example, Isaiah 53. The fact that the Jews rejected him, but largely the Gentiles around the world by the hundreds of millions have received him, is also part of the prophecy. That's, that's an amazing fact as well. So, so you're saying that because God um, decided that at some point the Jews are going to be nearly annihilated. Um, yep. First of all, where does that leave their free will? Second of all, um, so the, and you think that, uh, uh, that the Bible is still the most morally superior, uh, the, 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 the superior source of morality. When, when well, God all, determines, I, I predetermines the death of the Jews and expects them to follow him and uh-huh. everything he says. Well, the reason they were near extinction was not because of God. It was because they rejected God and went outside of his protection. And he was warning them that if they rejected the Messiah and if they walked away from him, that their enemies were many and would seek to destroy them. And that is the reality of it. So... I wouldn't accuse, uh, for example, the Bible says Jesus was crucified. That doesn't mean we should crucify people. It's just recording an evil act in human history. Likewise, the destruction of the Jewish people is an evil act, and the Bible does not say that destroying Jewish people is right. In fact, it says anyone who does that, anyone who destroys the Jewish people is destroying the apple of God's eye, and God will destroy them. So I would not uh, say so, that God is being immoral in recording these things. Uh, so uh, just, uh, we're just going to have to let you go. We'll let you let make one more point, just so we can have Sean and Empty have uh, yeah. have a bit more of an interaction between themselves. Okay. Right. Uh, so uh, if you want, to, so Sol, if you have any points, if you want to bring up, just we'll just let you have. I would uh, just say, I would, yeah, I'd say this. I'm still not. Uh, I'm not content to move past the point of saying. You still have not a objective standard of morality. You have no basis for saying what is right and what is wrong objectively. Well, I, mean, I have one word for that, and that's empathy. Exactly. Okay, why, why is empathy morally obligatory? Because we it, can understand it, it, how the other person feels. Why is understanding what the other person feels morally obligatory? It's not morally obligatory, but it does create a better society, and because, yeah. and, and, and because okay, it's such a strong emotion, because it is it. such that's a strong true. emotion... Because, uh-huh. because because empathy is one of the strongest emotions, it, we are compelled to act in that way. Okay, some people are without empathy, as you know, right? But you yourself said that it's not a moral issue. I asked you, why is it morally obligatory to have empathy? You said it's not. Therefore, empathy, building a better society, all that stuff is not a moral issue. As I said before, atheism gives no grounds for say, saying anything is morally obligatory. Well, and morality... Well, Morality deals with right and wrong, what we ought to do and what we ought not to do. Atheism, as I said, cannot provide that. Well, even if it doesn't provide it, it still, um, it still um, can be demonstrated to create better societies. Do you not agree? Creating, as I said, creating a better society does not create or give a justification or a basis for morality, saying that it's morally better to create a society or destroy it. You still haven't told me what the difference in that case, is. In, in that case, I'll give up on morals and, and go for the better society because I, I really don't see the, the benefit of having morals and and all it all it actually compelling me to do is believe in Jesus and go to heaven. That's it. Yeah. Not, not, not act in any way, in any kind way towards human beings because I don't get rewarded for it whatsoever. All I'm rewarded for is my faith. 
children. I don't understand your objection. I'm asking you, where is the moral obligation? Where is the moral foundation in atheism? Why is it morally better to build a productive society than destroy it? You still haven't answered that. It, it, like I said, it, it's my empathy that drives me to help other people. I didn't ask what drives you. I said what justifies, what makes it right, what is the foundation of right and wrong. It can't be your you empathy. You can test the you, impact. But why okay. is it... Uh, it's, uh, yeah. if, I, if I can answer it, a, uh, it's well, I'm, I'm actually atheist. done. That's, okay, so th thank you uh, for calling in. Thanks for your call. Sure, uh, th thanks for having me. Um, yeah, have a nice evening. Grant, cheers, thank you. Sorry, uh, can I... Can I sorry, Ketch, did you want to say something? Uh, I just wanted to give just my own answer to this, uh, to Venom's point. Uh, the reason why... Um, an eight. Well, I won't. I really want. To, I don't want to say atheist uh, morality because atheism really is just a, a, a disbelief in God, and it's really more a secular morality. But uh, that's yeah. just semantics. Um, why is it better? Why? Why, why is it good? Why? Why does this? Why? What? What? what what's the justification for morality for in the secular mindset? Um, it's quite. Cool. If I got you right there. Um, it's because cooperation works. That doesn't see... mean cooperation is morally better than discooperation. Well, let's, let's just test this now, Sean, right? If I sure. were to uh, defect against you and murder you and oppress you, would that be right? Of course not, but I'm asking you... Exactly, because it would be against your rights, your, uh, your equality. Equality right, is a I fundamental... Have, hold, on now, hold on now, I can account for where my rights come from and why I have them. You, exactly. however, That's said that prior proposed. to someone yes. writing on a piece of paper, they don't have rights. So, in your worldview, as I've already proven, there is no such thing as rights. It's as forceful as Peter Parker is Spider-Man, is the same as saying someone, a human being, has rights. Sure. Both are fictional in your worldview. No, sure. They are practical value. We can test it, we can repeat it, we can observe it, Sean. That doesn't make it morally right or wrong. Because it can help people, because we can do Why more. is helping people I've, morally right Sean, or wrong? This, this, can you just allow me to speak? The difference in this debate is I've actually explained a mechanism that can help to create a better society. You haven't. Uh, actually, I have. No. What you haven't done is justified why we should be concerned at all. Yes, I have. All right, I think that's the debate. I thank you very much for your time, gentlemen. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming on um, for the uh, okay. for the show. Uh, it's great having you on. Uh, like Thanks very much. Uh, I just I just said uh, t I just said thank you. Uh, uh, thank you to Empty and thank you to everybody. Uh, I think we'll still be going on. If, uh, for another hour because we usually do do a two hour show just to keep uh, the tradition and um, I think we'll just uh, wing it <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll bring in a couple more hosts onto the show so we'll get start the show back up in about five minutes alright thank you gentlemen I'm logging out I'm logging out take care okay <laughs>